Hi, my name is Jennifer Cox, and I'm here to talk to you today about nursing sensitive quality indicators. What is it and why is it important to us? There is an organization called the NDNQI, stands for the National Database of Nursing Quality Indicators. What is the NDNQI? It was established by the nursing, was American Nursing Association in 1998. This organization tracks and reports on quality indicators that heavily rely on nursing actions. They provide a standardized means of evaluating interventions nurses perform in connection with patient outcomes, and they work to establish evidence-based practices that elevate nursing successful outcomes. They monitor and compare outcomes of nursing indicators. This group has helped many organizations and many healthcare facilities improve issues that were identified as quality indicators. NDNQI indicators reflect on three aspects of nursing care, the structure, the process, and the outcomes. Structural indicators are possible examples would be a supply of nursing staff, skill levels, and education and certifications completed. For supply level or supply of nursing staff, usually that indicates how many nurses are available per shift to take care of a certain number of patients. Usually you get a set ratio that is a target. Most places are able to hit these targets. Like let's say if you're in an ICU, you should be a one to two to one ratio. And pediatrics or oncology, a three to one. So you have three patients per one nurse. Um, most, you know, places will try to stick to a certain number as a goal. The skill level of the nurses, how many years experience they have, or what training or additional certifications they've completed, and education and certification levels also take into account whether you're, you've gone on to advance your degree or you just have a basic degree, or if you've sought out additional certifications. Process indicators include nursing job satisfactions, methods of patient assessments, and nursing interventions. Outcome indicators, things that happen in response to our last slide. You can uh, monitor things like pressure ulcers, falls, central line infections, UTIs associated with urinary catheters, patient satisfaction and pain management, nursing job satisfaction, staffing mix, patient satisfaction with medical information provided, and patient satisfaction with nursing care. There are other outcome indicators out there, but these are some of the most common ones that are addressed in today's facilities. One of their key jobs is to gather information and data. There are over 18,000 hospital units contributing to data for 200 quantitative measures that are out there. Like I said, I gave you a few examples in the slide before about what they monitor for. And Prescani surveys on patient satisfaction, nursing surveys, and data audits are also included in their research. They also distribute this information by unit-specific reports on quality indicators and a database, internet-based, that you can go to to see where the ranking um, facilities are on each indicator. So let's get into what's really important here. As a nurse, what are our roles whenever it comes to quality indicators? What is the NDN QI looking for from us? You should know what quality indicators your unit is focusing on. Currently, I work on a NICU, and our quality indicator that we are focusing on are CLAPSIs or um, the infections from central lines, so central line effect, like induced infections. So that's what our quality indicator is that we are monitoring. Um, in the NICU, we often do place UV lines, um, UA lines, PIC lines, um, very rarely a Roviac, but we place these lines and our goal is to have no infections. Um, but occasionally we do end up with 
one or two right now. Our um, rate for the last six months is zero, so we're doing very well there. Um, we also follow improvement plans to increase quality of care, and one of the reasons that we have zero infections on our unit happens to be that we are following a bundle program that helps us to avoid having children develop these infections. We are to complete surveys to help them gather data, and we utilize the results to transform care through evidence-based practice. Because we use these bundles and we do research to make sure these things are going the way they were supposed to, we are able to see that we develop evidence-based practice. So through peer reviews, through uh, article reviews, through means of seeing what actually works, the NDN QI helps us to do this. So our references that I have posted here is kind of small. I can zoom in, but um, these are the articles that I have referenced for this presentation. For the first, Gupta um, et al., they had a quality improvement program to reduce hospital-acquired pressure injuries, which is very similar to what we did at the NICU I work at, and that was to create a bundle of preventive measures that we also chart on every shift on our patients. But um, they were able to reduce their infection or their pressure injuries by 84.4% just by following this bundle. We also had Medling, Medling Green et al. Um, they did a multi-state program to reduce catheter-associated infections in, in an intensive care unit. And they also followed several hospitals that were doing bundling programs to have preventive measures in place. And this is very much evidence-based. A lot of places have done this. Um, we have Iker. Mustafa et al. They um, also had cost-effective measures of reducing CLAPSI or the the central line infections and they before starting the bundle program had 130,061 infections and they were able to decrease that by 116,679 over a period of time. So they um, also had 71 prevented and saved 208,997 of their infections were taken care of because of this program that they had started. We uh, also referenced Hold Crosser at all for any information on the NDNQI and their process. So I hope you have enjoyed this presentation. If you have questions, please let me know. Have a nice day.